currently 7.45 a.m. on Monday, November 15th, 2021. A train rolling by sundown was last night. Sunrise is happening, which is a good thing because you do not want to be in Texarkana during the hours of sundown or after sundown. That's what I've always heard. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. You see the sun glaring there on these directional arrows, stating that it's right on the state line. Texarkana, Arkansas, and Texarkana, Texas, which technically I am in the Texas version. And I will be covering in great detail the filming locations of the town that dreaded sundown released on end of December 1976 the horror genre. I really enjoy this movie. I've watched it a lot of times in the past, but then in you know recent weeks, kind of leading up to doing the research to, to find everything I could possibly find here in town. The Phantom. Before Michael Myers, before Jason Voorhees. There was this guy. He was never found. Based semi-loosely on the events of a of real real transpiring happenings in this town decades before the movie came out very loosely it's not completely historically accurate but it's a fun one slightly terrifying a lot of comedy in there it's a good it's a good matchup i'm going to go match up some some screen grabs i have them right over here on the table right there fact I've got a lot of them. It's gonna be a busy day. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Start off downtown at the corner of Front Street and Main. There's some newer buildings on the back side of this former hotel that now sits desolate and empty. And over on the far side of that, quite a bit of different scenes took place, as well as this train station that also sits abandoned. A lot took place on the exterior and the exterior and interior, I should say, of this building. In fact, the opening sequence with that great voiceover the narration of this film is awesome. It took place right in, right over through here. Union Station. There used to be a clock up there in that empty circle. And there are a lot of cars parked down here because there is a building next door that's very busy. But I'm glad as for now, this is kind of open so I can kind of line some stuff up because what I'm looking at here is very important to the film. Now back 45 years ago, this structure was not here. However, this one was. Seen better days, that is for sure. If you've seen the movie, definitely would recognize this. I'm glad it's still standing, but not really sure why it's still standing. Not in good shape. There used to be a road that went right through here through some renovations, it's now kind of a little courtyard area. But you can see the angle of these buildings. And there's an awning over there that a lot of the characters walked in and out of. Quite a few extras doing that opening scene with the narration over the top of it. This is what it looks like modern day. Still has the angle over there. It still has that awning through that doorway. And you can see Parts of it are open to the elements. Not structurally sound, however. So this would be the opening scene. Nailed it. Would have had some parking meters, some classic cars, the hotel, the red carpet there and the awning. Yeah. Take a look at that. 
Is the awning still there? Well, kind of anyway. Check out the little places the bulbs would go into. The bot bottom of the awning. And this would have been a couple double doors here. And I like the fact that the windows still still look the same even though cracked and whatnot. You can see there. Yeah, the same type of same type of windows. Stuff like that's pretty exciting that you could kind of step back in time a bit. Now it's gonna to be tough to get the exact angle because there are a lot of cars parked here currently. But newspaper rack here, and notice the the style of this light pole. Show that in a moment, but another awning from the train station and then looking back over towards that hotel. So there is the bottom of that light pole and where that newspaper rack would have been looking that way. And stepping back, this is kind of the, the angle they had with the pole there between the awning and the building. Paper boy, you'd hear the, the voiceover of the paper boy saying extra, extra, read all about it during that. And if you watch that opening sequence, the clock is still there at that point as a dump truck a couple blocks away. It's taking care of its morning routine. This brickwork is a little more open than it was. So the concrete came up to about here and the brickwork over time, over these decades, has been a little more, a little more open. But if you look at this angle, you can see some of the brickwork already starting to, to kind of peek out from there. And there's that awning right over there. I'm kind of wondering now, you know, all these vehicles are here next to what was the station and the workers have parked here. There is a Michael Myers from one of the people in the station. Do they know that one of the characters that predated Myers in film history took place right here? Do they know about the Phantom? I certainly hope so. In this general vicinity was a post here looking from that angle at Union Station there. It was kind of a little bit, little bit later on as the, the movie progressed when, you know, sundown happened. But you can see it says billiards and dominoes and you can see the station over there. Which kind of leads me to believe that before they built this new building, there was a, a billiard spot right over here in, in this area. At one point, you see the Phantom's feet from a low down perspective from what was the street where the cars were parked there. That's now this little courtyard. Walking along, just showing his feet, giving a lot of suspense. And where he walked out of would have been this precise door and precise spot right about there you can even see you can even see the little kind of like kind of goes up just a little bit with the concrete and here's the example so there's that little kind of lip upward and there's the woodwork and the phantom's feet first were shown walking right out of this very door frame Getting a little peek through the crack here in the wood of where the actor, there was a stuntman that went on to do a lot of other things in Hollywood, a lot of other big budget movies. He played the role. Would have been in there, they would have said action. He would have walked out. They also built a fake ticket booth right here adjacent to that door. I'll show an example and this was a fake theater because it's not a real theater in real life. The Paramount to be exact. That's what the awning looked like then. Over here is where earlier he had walked out of. This is a little bit later when they're signifying nightfall and everyone's locking up and going home for the evening. You can still see that windows there. And the, the fake ticket booth 
would have been right next to that door. Right about there. I can't get over too much farther because this car, this truck's in the way. If you read closely between the theater and the hotel awning, so on the corner it says coffee shop. There was a coffee shop facade as well. Right over in there. Back over to this angle next to the coffee shop, that, that hotel entrance. And the couple that would have walked out of there did not know what their demise would be shortly after they got in their car and left. Wasn't good. It was very rainy. You can see the rainfall going down. Got the umbrella out. Walked out of there. There were two double doors and he kind of has a little smirk when he sees the, the raindrops. Some double doors and some panes of glass. Obviously all these years later disrepair and now it's just all boarded up they then get in their car driving in the rain turn the corner which kind of a nice segue shows off this portion of the building using a number of a lot of other scenes right over here just right there gotta love the style of the vehicles back then Yeah, this is nice that there's no cars parked over here. There it is, right there. This looks all too familiar as much as I've been watching this movie. This is so cool. Captain J.D. Morales and Deputy Norman Ramsey could be seen walking down this stairwell here. Windows have been covered up, obviously. And they were waiting on Sparkplug, who it's kind of like a Barney Fife type character. Kind of unusual for the film, but did add a little comic relief to it as well. Couldn't find the keys. Had to go back up the stairwell. Come back down, go into the office. And then finally got the keys and pulled the car out from this spot here. Now there were some parking meters and then drove off. He was a bad driver though, very bad driver. The role of spark plug was played by the director, Charles B. Pierce, shown here, going out the front door. And he used that name because of the nickname he was given for his directing style. And this is really, yeah, this whole awning here, not in the best shape. I'm glad he found the keys, though. You know, the director had a little supporting role, too, a spark plug. Peeking through the glass, you could see those stairs. Those stairs are the stairs behind him here. As he's quickly running out, realizes he's holding up the others who were parked right down here. Quite a bit took place up here on this little this little ledge when I'm walking up the stairs when J.D. Morales played by Ben Johnson who fantastic actor in this is being interviewed by the press right over in here He's kind of making his way over towards them you see the cameras you see that railing right there I like this view of Deputy Norman Ramsey looking out the window very you know confused on what was happening in the town, and that would be this very window. Right there. See the reflection of the building off of the abandoned building behind me. Okay, two different moments. Another meeting with the press right there, up on the ledge. I'm kind of zoomed out a little bit, but there's a kind of a closer look. I believe they were up on like a scaffolding or something. They were elevated just a little bit or possibly through one of the windows up on the upper level behind me at the now empty building. And then where Sparkplug finds the key, you know, before pulling off in the cruiser. Right there. 
and obviously the parking lines are different. They're kind of angled now when back then you could see they were more kind of more straight on. Now I'm going to walk around the back. This is the front of the building. You can see the train tracks over here, which is where J.D. Morales was dropped off by the train. You can see right there. This is interesting. Looks a lot different from that angle, how it was back then. This says, to the station. does not look like I'm going to be able to get access to a couple spots I was really wanting to document. Fenced off pretty good. Got the appropriate signage. Dang. After walking the perimeter outside and then climbing up these stairs here around the back, I need to get through those doors is one of two pinnacle locations of the interiors. I'm just gonna have to explain it. Almost positive that everything still looks precisely as it did back in the 70s through there, but those doors are all closed up. This is all fenced off. And no one's really on property. I guess I could ask someone out front next door that's walking around. That's about the best. It's kind of disappointing. From what I can tell, just in recent days, weeks, or months, in a very recent time frame, they have really kind of sealed everything up. You know, obviously, if you had a, a ladder and quite a bit of, of gumption, you could go up there, go through that window, but I'm not going to be doing that. But everything around the front, which I expected, but I was almost certain around the back that that stairwell would lead up and in, but I guess too many people here causing damage or other things. So they've sealed it all up recently. So I will do the next best thing and just describe it to the best of my ability to give a little, little context. Remember what I was saying about that window here, this first window that you see the reflection of? That would have been a facade of an office inside the interiors. Going up the stairs, the spark plug walked up right through here, and J.D. Morales is looking out well, he was looking out the window and then he turns back to talk to this gentleman. So that window there, now it does look the same inside, but I am kind of showing it from the outside perspective, is that very window. The only one that appears to not have any kind of breaks in it. You see the, you see the reflection. But if you were to go inside, or if I was to go inside, this kind of greenish blue wall there, you can see that's a facade up here. You can even see the brickwork and the top, the camera, it's kind of showing the top of that fake wall that makes up the office that was right up there. Peeking through the window again. Now if you go up the top of the stairs, the railings still look the same, the banisters, right over the top of that brickwork was where Spark Plug's desk was. He was kind of a receptionist. He was answering the phone calls. And over on this side, if you go to the other top of that brickwork, over there is where the office was. Notice the railings are still the same. Kind of looking at the railings. So there, there's the reception desk. There are those railings and there is that fake office. Now, if I was inside, I'd be able to line this up, but can't do it. Going over the desk again, 
Notice this door over here. Now the door has been removed, but notice the brickwork in these two windows where they have a bunch of flyers on them. So those flyers would have been on those. So his desk would have been behind that wall. And there are those two windows that were covered up with boards from the inside and the flyers. And I'm gonna zoom in, you'll be able to see where that door was. The door's been removed with the hole for the door in that corner right over there, still there. Kind of zoomed in through the window. So there's that corner and there's where that door would have been. I'll show you a couple other examples of, of that door. So keep in mind this door, just keep it in mind. Because there it is again, right there. The door where the keys were placed. There's the signage for the keys. There's JD next to the window. This guy is confessing, but Morales knows he is not telling the truth. So this window, there's the door, there's that window is that second window that's open and you can see the door through there. I have to reverse this because I am on the opposite side looking up the stairs where they are walking up. In fact, those three windows are still here. I'll show those windows in a minute. But fake facade of the office immediately up the stairwell and there's that door I was mentioning in those windows. So reversed, you know, keep in mind I am not inside, I'm outside, but if you reverse it, there's those three windows right up there. One, two, three, you can see that through the awning and you would have the fake facade of the office and everything else that I mentioned as well. There they are walking up the stairs. Everyone is interviewing. Really wish this was not the case and there was someone around that knew how to get in here or if I would even be allowed to get in here, but it's not happening. This will just have to do. It doesn't even look like it'd be that safe inside there. I mean, this whole downtown, pretty, not, not structurally sound a lot of these buildings. You can see through the dirty glass there reflection. In a roundabout way, it's kind of fun being presented with a challenge and not being able to be inside there, but I want to show where the car keys were placed on the wall when the other guy points at the wall to spark plugs and says the keys are right up there. I'm going to zoom in and show exactly where the car keys were placed. Looking through that window right there on that brick wall in that very corner where that indentation is, I know it's a detail that really isn't that important, but it's the little things that I get excited about and a couple other spots I want to point out. Same level, second level. Adjacent is like a kind of a big open section. Right up in there. When he first gets off the train, Morales wants to buy a cigar. So he makes his way over to the concession stand, which had the cigars. which would be on the far end over this way. And I, I will zoom in and show where that concession stand area was. So he would have walked in more from this side, walking towards me in that open area, talking to some of the locals and whatnot and needed a scar, so walked over there and bought one. Through the glass, that's not a reflection, that is a structure inside of the structure. That was like a little store at the bottom base of that. That's where he ended up purchasing quite a few of them. Also, were some oranges for sale. He didn't want any vitamin C. He just wanted a, a smoke. Notice the windows. See the windows there. You can see those windows over their shoulders there. Okay, I'm done with these. I do have quite a few more that I would have loved to have matched up, but wasn't in the cards. I don't know if it's wise to be standing right here from that spot that I showed earlier where the phantom, I'm gonna get down here low, crawled, well not crawled out of it, walked right out of there. Walk back over this way, just to show a spot that I'm not 100% confident about 
but I am I am kind of confident, not 100%, but the more I look at this, I was thinking this is where possibly the interiors, you know, exteriors of the hotel, but interiors of the restaurant where they were eating. The gentleman shows up and says that the Phantom could be anyone, one of the local town folk, alluding that maybe he was, the Phantom was in the restaurant. But the more I look at it, I'm noticing another archway door. And I'm going to say it's probably this one. If I had to, if I had to guess, I would say it was this one. Just with the way, looking through there, of the way the wall angles and up top. Now obviously all of it has been destroyed, but the way the arch of the door is, you know, the, the way it's angled with that circular pattern, you know, the wood and glass has been removed. They very well could have been sitting right behind there because when they walk in, they kind of shift over that way so the table would be right about there. Now I'm getting a better perspective, kind of from up elevated like this. And I'm noticing there's like a pole in there. So if you walked in, immediately you'd have a pole. So the camera angle would be the door and then you got that pole over there. And there is, there is a pole in there. Let me zoom in and show. Yep, take a look. Right there through the archway of the door camera would have been set up on the other side of that pole looking back towards me. It is the same building and even though it's not completely attached to where I think it is down at the end, if you peek in through here, this is kind of reminiscent of where I just was where the Phantom walked out of there, but if you peek through here, the way the entire building is, you know it's all one building, but notice those pillars there that stretch all the way down, so I'm guessing it probably goes all the way to the end, and the pillars I'm referring to Right there, look at the woodwork on those pillars. Same type that are in here, you know, 20, 30 yards away from the other storefront in the same building. But there's very similar pillars with woodworking. Okay, I'm going a little too far into details here. All right. I think I've got the spots here in downtown are still quite a few more to find the phantom he was never caught and the real you know in reality what this was based on and in the movie never was caught One spot I could not find was the barber shop. I was trying to notice the type of roof line there. But I would imagine since they used so much of this building, it could have been any one of these. This does not look like it, but everything else here on this other side of where I just was, it's all kind of shut up, shuttered up. Can't really see in. But it could have been anywhere through here. Yeah, it's been so long ago. Tough to tell. About another mile away, mile and a half away, located in the Quality Hill Historic District, corner of Locust Street and 6th, is where the dance was. Take a look at this. Now all the times viewing thought that this was just a parking lot where all the cars were parked but in fact it is a road that shifts that way and a little grass area here still looks the same except very overgrown in need of a little bit of a mowing of sorts there's a perspective see the cars parked along the road and this very unique looking building off in the distance. And the interiors were also inside here. Judging by the way the windows look when you're on the inside looking out. Now 
There they are leaving the dance, going out to the vehicle. Little did they know that a short time after this, the musical instrument that she was using at the dance, the Phantom, well, it's just no spoilers. Didn't end well. It's kind of a kind of kind of a terrifying moment. You just got you gotta see it. I, you know, any of the locations I do, including this one, really should probably watch the movie before, if not after. Or you could watch this and then watch the film and then go back, go back and then watch the watch where the spots are again afterwards. But you just have to watch the scene yourself. Notice the windows here and the incline of the roof going inside looking out. So these windows, there were two sets. So you got the lower set, the windows shown in the photograph there would have been up there that have now been boarded up. This would have been the door they walked out of as well, but the camera would have been facing towards where I'm at looking up. You can see those windows up, th up top there which would be those windows and you could see the incline how it kind of kind of shifts downward just like this roof kind of has a slight shift downward as well which is kind of interesting because they would have walked out here this grass is very very tall by the way it's kind of smushed down but i walked through it this grass is very tall it's so tall that gravity has kind of forced it kind of downward but they would have walked out to the car there through the front door, which was there. But when you watch that particular moment, you know, based on these windows, which are at the front, they leave through the back and then the very next take, they're walking out through this front door. Now it's just a metal door, but it was a real door back then. Restaurant supply. Could have been a restaurant supply back then, but soon after was, and now really just being used for storage Very unique looking building though. There's a window I should be able to peek in right up here and you can kind of see where the dance took place. Quite a bit of mesh to look through but you kind of get the idea. And there are some restaurant supplies still in there. It says office across the street. This stretch of road outside of town, known as Mandeville Road, was used in quite a few moments. In fact, whoa, right there, that's the spot. That's one of them. Notice the pillars there in the driveway leading onto the property. And the brickwork. This is when the spark plug hits the brakes. Driving, he's driving a little too recklessly. as a car went by. This was used in a number of different moments, but most notably was right here. Mandeville Road, just outside town. Pulling into Spring Lake Park now, right next to the water tower, Texarkana water tower right there. Now this property is massive, so there's no way of matching up the tree that was used. Because there are probably, throughout the entire property, very expansive property, 5,000 trees. But at one of them, a trombone moment. A phantom. This is only one section of the trees. Thousands, thousands of trees. I thought I'd be able to match up the tree. It's not going to happen. There he is with the trombone. 
and there she is over there against the tree and it could be any one of these and supposedly on occasions they will do a screening of the movie right here in Spring Lake Park that'd be pretty fun that's that's what I've heard anyway over to the Texarkana College campus I don't know why I had trouble saying that this empty plot of land on the far end of the campus used to sit a building that has been demolished shown here it's been gone for a while but notice over here that says Texarkana, Texarkana College Parking. That was kind of a clue on where this was. You see the plot of land. And the sidewalk has been kind of elevated a little bit. That could possibly be the tree or maybe the seedling from the tree that was shown with the, the angle kind of going that way. Kind of probably more like that. But yeah, you can see there is a tree there and a little grass area and everything. Okay, move it on. Over to the corner of Watts Street and 14th is where the church was, where the wedding took place, right here on this very corner. However, as you can see, it's been bulldozed. You still see the sidewalk. Not really even a foundation where the wedding was. Now, there is a foundation of a, of a home that was behind it, as well as over there. This, this is the angle we're looking at here. Now that I'm backing up a little bit, getting a little bit better perspective from here, you can see the, well, it's basically a drainage area. I thought it was a sidewalk, but it's basically where the drainage goes with the ambiance of the train going by. You can see the bicycle, and you can see that little drainage area, and where the car was parked, it's right here. And I'm also noticing the sidewalk, well, the sidewalk leading up to the church building is gone. However, right over here is a step up. So you'll see there's a step here, that's like a piece of concrete, and then another step, which leads me to believe that it would have kind of been right about there. And if you watch that moment, the groom, I always kind of laugh at his facial expression when all the rice is being thrown. Kind of kind of a funny, funny look on his face as it goes out. This is all during the opening narration. But yeah, the building's gone. Over off of West 7th Street now. The address being 1738 West 7th. Palmer's Grocery, Dawn Wells probably recognize her from Gilligan's Island. She was also in town that dreaded sundown. Palmer's became Lanier's Corner before it closed down, but you can still see up here where it says Lanier's, right there. But on the awning, it says Palmer's, and one of the associates is walking the groceries out to her car. Has the address right on the side, 17 Three eight, the Lanier's corner. It all pretty much kind of looks the same. In fact, even this this little window here, still there, where showed that they had bacon on sale and bread and hoop cheese. She would have been parked right over in here. There is a bicycle tire, and the Phantom pulls up in his vehicle right along that area. And on the side, looks like this little, like a meter of some sort, still there. You can kind of, kind of see how that looks. Got the windows boarded up top. And this metal door here, when she pulls off, drives off, can be seen for a brief moment camera would have been back similar to this walking backwards yeah pretty neat that it's still standing I'm trying to get the angle here 
there's that metal door. There she is, kind of looking over at the Phantom against the brick wall. Right about here. Oh, more from more from this angle. Yep, Don Wells from Gilligan's Island. Made it back downtown to Main Street, 216 Main Street to be precise, to the theater that was not the fake facade of the Paramount Theater, which I showed earlier, but another one that says Paramount Theater, which was used for the world premiere that they show at the very end with the narration, showing the very end of the narration, where the, the crowd is lined up and then they allude to that the Phantom might be in line to watch his own movie which is pretty interesting. And one thing you really have to notice is the checkerboarded floor, which you can see through the window, and then showing it in the screen grab has the checkerboarded floor as well. I tried to locate also the train tracks from the closing sequence. Engine number 201. And this was filmed in Scott, Arkansas, a few hours from here. I would have drove up there. However, these tracks have been removed from the premises. They are no longer there. Did a little bit of research on where it is located. So this now can be found. This locomotive here, which can be seen, these were taken in Scott. The train has been removed. But number 201, if you're ever near Eureka Springs, it's located at a train museum there. The train from town that dreaded sundown, number 201, is there in Eureka Springs. Maybe one of these days I'll go take a peek at it, but it's there. I have located the town that dreaded sundown train, and it's a few hours from here. Out, kind of out of the way, but pretty, pretty dang cool. It still exists. Also, during the recording of that and the filming of that, notice there's a little continuity error, a little mistake there with the cameraman up top, and could not find a few spots. I could not find these homes that were just kind of used for a brief kind of narration, montage, you know, this kind of area here. This could be in town. Consider this a homework assignment for anyone who's feeling inspired, as well as this road. I thought this was going to be over near where Spark Plug hit the brakes, thinking maybe there's a train track over there, but could not locate. I mean, this has been 40 plus years, 45 years. So a lot of these buildings have, have been torn down, but found quite a bit. Also, this home here, where Don Wells is kind of being chased. There was even an address up on the side, but after searching all the addresses anywhere in town, even Garland City, where I am hearing they also did a couple, could not find. I'm just trying to show everything I found, but then also the ones that really kind of, kind of threw me for a loop. Could not find this. Supposedly, this is on a ranch somewhere in Garland City, you know, on the outskirts, way outskirts of town. And there's the ranch name. It says Bar Ranch. Couldn't find it though. And I couldn't get inside here. But I did discover a lot and I feel like I gave a pretty good detailed version of the spots from town. The dreaded sundown. The classic horror film classic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And that's gonna do it for today. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. Keep waiting for spark plug to run out of there. Or maybe JD Morales. The vlog is over. Oh, one last thing. I never realized when you're watching the film that you can drive underneath here. There's a, it's kind of, it goes, let me go up here and show. I also did talk to an associate over there. I was working outside. If there was any chance of getting in here and it just wasn't happening. But I did ask around. I never realized this was down here. There's one scene during the film where you can see a ladder kind of right up there. I never realized how large that ladder must have been.
to go from there all the way up to there. The vlog is over. Still looking for the, the phantom after all these years.